if you want to check out the newest collaboration of the Beautylish and Chico Hoto 2019 release, then please keep on watching. Hello, my friends. If it's your first time here, my name is Alicia. Thank you so much for clicking. Kinky Sweat stands for my kinky hair and sweat life. I am a fitness professional who loves all things movement and beauty. If you want to check out my movement adventures, you can head over to my Instagram. Today, we're talking newest addition to the Beautylish and Chico Hodo lineup. They had several collaborations in the past and I was sent this collection. I always want to disclose that and can I just say I am very much grateful and thankful to the Beautylish team. I had no idea I was getting this. I received an email alert to say that a package with this video is in no way forcing you to buy these brushes. If you are a Fude brush fan, if you love everything Beautylish and Chico Hodo and you know you're going to buy these, then hopefully this video will provide some insight and help you guide your purchase decision. If you're not into natural brushes but you're just here to hang out, well thank you so much for doing so. Here is the box it came in with and I will have close-up shots of each brush and the very kind note that Beautylish included in the package as well as the Chico Hodo Certificate of Authenticity. It also has a makeup brush guide that includes details of how to take care of your brushes, how to wash your brushes. In fact, I am not actually sure how to wash these in particular because the design is unlike a standard brush, but we'll get into that in a bit. This will release today, so by the time I upload this video, I believe it will already be live on the Beautylish website to buy. It is $155. For three brushes, yes, I think it's due to the type of hair. I would put the official combination up next to me, but I believe most of it is gray squirrel hair. It is cruelty-free. I know some of you feel that's not possible to have a cruelty-free natural animal hair brush. The Japanese brush makers undergo strict regulations as to how they obtain their resources, and I don't know the specific details. All I know is that they have a lot of rules in place when it comes to collecting the hair. So if you know more about that please enlighten us below but they do label these brushes as cruelty free this is a limited edition set like the holiday set they did restock it maybe if this sells out it will restock I'm not entirely sure. The goal behind this collection was to create a travel friendly collection this was pulled from the Beautylish Instagram. Hi Beautylish! Hi Claire! That covers essential needs of makeup application while delivering the highest performance and exquisite designs. What I look to achieve in this video is to show you each brush, demo each brush, and just share my final thoughts with you in the end. The first brush up we have is their powder brush. Now you notice, or when I actually first received the package, the brushes come like this in the box, situated in the foam inserts. And I was like, Oh wow. I mean, the design of the handle is beautifully exquisite. I mean, the details of the sakura trees are just gorgeous. The cherry blossoms, I suppose. And please correct me if I don't get something right when describing the designs. I definitely want to be as accurate as possible but I will have a slip or two I'm sure you take it out of the cover and then you have this mechanism that pushes the bristles up but if you're wondering well how will that stay you'll take the cover slide it up and that's how it gets is more traditional brush design the powder brush as you probably would already assume is used for loose powder uh, bronzer or any type of powder you wish to apply on a larger area of your face next up we have the cheek brush and again in the same way it comes in its little container like so again it slips out put it on and the handle pushes the mechanism up and then you get the bristles out of the tube this will be used for smaller areas of your face highlight blush contour or even bronzer you could probably use the very tip of the brush to contour your nose if you do that step in your routine and the last brush up we have is the shadow brush this is a flat shader brush that i will present to you my observation here before we get to the end of the video i do wish this was a crease brush the only reason i say that is because of how i like to do my makeup so this is just based on my opinion and how I like my eyes to look. If I'm doing a very low makeup day, I still would apply something in my crease, whether it's 
a deeper loose powder, a bronzer, a contour shade, or even a blush. And I feel that's very difficult to achieve with a flat shader brush. Now, if I were to dip back into their holiday collection, this is from their 2018 holiday set. And you can see that it's much more fluffy than the one from the Maki set. And I could actually get away with this shape design of a brush to apply powder throughout my crease. Unfortunately, this is a little stiff. It doesn't have as much movement, not enough fluff to really distribute powder products beautifully throughout the crease. This is mainly to apply like a lid shade. And unfortunately, I don't just apply lid shades to my lids. If anything, I would just use a finger, which I find is easier to achieve when applying a standout lid color than it is to apply powder evenly throughout your crease. So I do wish that they made this into a crease brush. We'll still use it, see how it goes. I haven't washed this yet because to be quite frank, I'm not too sure or I guess I would just wash it as I would any other brush, but I feel this is not as tightly packed as a traditional brush is with the bristles in the ferrule. This is a little more loosey-goosey simply because of the design of the travel set and how they the bristles push up and down the tube. But let's get in a little closer. On my face, I have the Pat McGrath Sublime Perfecting Foundation. Over powder, actually. Her powders are on the way, but I wanted to start filming with these brushes because I'm on a schedule. So I set my sunscreen with the Milk Loose Powder in Medium, and then I went in with Pat's foundation, and applying the powder first definitely influences the dry down to be a little more soft matte. But we'll talk about that more in the Pat video. Just for the sake of demoing, let's why not apply Apply a little more loose powder to the foundation with that i'll take my milk loose powder again with the brush i've been actually using these brushes for a little bit i really love how the bristles are long so you see how that just makes for really beautiful even distribution and it's very soft i don't believe the majority of the hair is from blue squirrel i believe it's mostly gray but despite it being gray, I find that these are incredibly soft. And look how just beautifully that moves across the skin. It has beautiful glide and it doesn't pack on product. It makes sure that the powders move effortlessly, really nicely across the skin. I know I got two little new pimples there because it's not because of the foundation. It's because I'm fighting with people down in the comments. <laughs> Anyway, the next step we'll roll in with is the bronzer. I've actually been using my Marc Jacobs Tantalize bronzer a lot with this brush, but just to mix it up, let's go in with the Fenty Beauty Sun Stalker in Island Ting. I'm gonna take quite a bit, and just so you see how it applies. Now, as a forewarning, because these two pieces separate, you'll, you'll, I don't know if you can hear that, it's like a, a rattling. I wanted to share that because audio wise, it will sound like it's broken or it's gonna come apart in any moment. But I think because of how these brushes are designed, it's not a traditional handle and ferrule. There is gonna be some rattling sounds as you apply your powder. Maybe you don't mind or maybe that's going to bother you and you feel that you shouldn't hear that with this price point. I totally get it. I don't know how they would eliminate that sound simply because of how this brush is designed. Maybe they could make the pieces tighter, but I think that would eliminate the ease of sliding the cover in and out. I'm not entirely sure, but I just wanted to, to mention that to you. I love this for bronzer. Despite it being a powder brush, I don't think it's too overly big that it will spread the bronzer too far across my face. I feel it keeps it right where it needs to go optimally. And again, I just love how it slides and I love the long bristles. I just feel 
it makes for ideal blending with powder and I don't see the powder laying heavy on the skin I felt it just blended it beautifully it doesn't look textured so we're doing good so far now it's up to you you can use the powder brush for your blush or you can use the smaller cheek brush for your blush we have a couple of blush options but I've been using my Chantecaille this is from their philanthropy series and this is in grace the sea turtle it's a light apricot shade I might get the B1 because it's a little more peachy but we shall see I really should be buying more of these blushes anyway I'll use the powder brush just so you can see how it distributes blush and again I just love how this moves and this will be also beautiful for finishing powder so that's how blush applies with the powder brush let's go in with the smaller cheek brush picking up quite a bit and take note, because we are using a smaller brush, it's more densely packed, so it's going to apply a little more color on the initial application. I'm gonna start a little higher, and then I'll take it around near the apples of my cheeks. Now, I feel the Chantecaille blush is forgivable from the get-go. If I were to use, let's say, my Cover FX blush, I will have to be a little careful. So just so you see that in action, let's dip into Warm Honey, and I'll use the, the cheek brush. So we have a lot. I'm actually gonna tap a little bit off, and then we'll go in very lightly. I'm basically whisking it and not putting it down right on the top of the brush because then I feel I'll get too much product initially. So I think that applied really well. Again, you just have to be very careful with the angle you go in on. If you find that you applied it too much, then you go back in with the bigger powder brush and just distribute and buff so it just kind of lightens up in saturation. So I think that's totally doable. Now to be even, I'll go in with my powder brush, Warm Honey, just so you can see how the powder brush worked with the Cover FX texture. And you just swirl, swirl, swirl. My skin looks really nice. It still looks smooth despite the amount of blush we've already applied to my face. Looking good so far. But you can kind of see because of how small the cheek brush is, if you go in like this, then that's gonna be where most of the color will apply so just be really careful that don't do it like i did go in like this i feel you gotta like sweep on first and then buff to spread highlighter i'm sure you're curious to see how highlight will apply with a brush that's not traditionally a highlight brush but which what what shape is really let's go in with the cheek this is my fenty me mana Hustler baby. Go in with, oh, that's too much. Let's tap some of that off. And then just using the side of the brush, I'm gonna first go in sideways and then turn the brush and swirl. So it's gonna pick up a lot more than a fan brush would or a small tapered brush would. But I feel because it's soft and the sides, it makes for very beautiful blending. I'm gonna do this side. Oh, all right. And again, if you wanna do any buffing, you just go in with the powder brush again and just buff that highlighter out and just buff everything while we're here. Let's experiment with a non-traditional type of highlighter. So we'll go back in to the cover of X. Now with the cheek brush and just see how that works on the actual cheek. I actually think it quite nice because the brushes are so soft that I feel it distributes highlight powders quite well. It moves really beautifully across the skin. I freaking love this powder brush. I know it rattles. I understand if you're like, I don't want anything that rattles for 155. I get it. But if you do decide to buy this, I think you'll be really happy with the texture of the hair and just how fast it moves across the skin and just how beautifully applies product. Now let's get a little closer for the eyes. I already prepped them with my usual Too Faced multi-use concealer in the shade Natural Beige. Here's the shadow brush again. See what we can do with this. I'm going in with my mini Natasha Denona nude palette. Let's first start with the beige shade. And I'll pretend that I'm just going to pat this along the crease, turn it onto its side, and then kind of make it, you know, work now again this is not an ideal way for me to apply my crease shades 
I much rather have a fluffy brush to just better distribute the product. And although it doesn't look bad, it's just not ideally how I want it to look, knowing how it usually looks when I use a fluffy brush. Let's go in with this bronze metallic here and kind of see how it works with a shimmery metallic shade. Well, that picked up pretty nicely. I think it picks up metallics and shimmers very well. However, I think because of the size of the brush, you kind of have to dip in a couple of times to uh, cover your lid depending on how large your lid is. So many trucks today. What is happening? Oh my God. All right, so we got the lid on. Let's just say we wanted a little more definition. Let's go in with the deep brown shade. Padding carefully on the outer V. You hear the rattling? It's gonna happen to you. I'm just letting you know. Not too bad. I should have wiped my brush to get most of the shimmer out. I'm trying to kind of pull it through the crease and further shape it here. Taking it to the outer corner. I don't know a third. Taking this shade now, inner lower lash line, and I'll take the nude shade on the inner Corner. So this is how the eyes look after using just the shadow brush from the travel set. It's not bad. I'm not crazy about it because I know I can do better. The only way I can do better is using a fluffy brush. So let's just say, for instance, this is my Hakuhoro B142. Let's go in with the first beige shade from the Natasha Denona Nude Palette. And I just feel it just better distributes the shadow in a way that I like for it to appear on my crease. And since I'll use my fingers to apply the lid shade, let's go in next with the deep brown. I'll pat that down and then I'll take it across. Now pull it out a little bit. Now even though this brush is very fluffy, I will just be very careful, put a little shadow on the edge of it and I'll take it still on the lower lash line because I rather like it to appear smoky. Now I'll go in with the bronze metallic shade with my finger and I'll pat it down just like so. Go back with the fluffy brush just to kind of whisk away the shimmer that traveled too far to my crease. Now this part is tricky, so I'll take that other shade and I'll just put it right on the inner third. So this is where a thinner flat shader brush will come in really handy to apply the inner third if you are into that. I am, and I know I have small fingers and I don't have very long nails. Do you like these nails? Of details down below. That this will be near impossible for you to achieve if you have long nails. So I totally get that. And that's where a shader brush will come in very handy. Also for this part, I usually use my pinky sometimes if I have a brush available or not to do so to apply shadow on my inner corner. So this is a difference between both eyes. Again, this eye was done all with the travel shader brush and this eye was done with a fluffy crease brush and my fingers to apply the metallic shades. Now you could tell me which one your favorite is, but because I'm so used to using fluffy crease brushes initially when I start my eye look, I find this one looks better, but this isn't bad. It's not the best, but it's all right. I see the UPS man. I'm waiting for you. Let's complete this look. Put on some lipstick. I finally got a Charlotte Tilbury lip cheat. I think I got one a while ago, but I didn't really like the shade. This is an iconic nude. And her kissing satin lipstick in Hepburn Honey. Just a little spritz because I have a lot of highlighter on me gonna pat it down so here is the finished look using all the brushes from the sakura mac sakura sakura i just went on google to find how you pronounce sakura is sakura sakura here is the finished look using all three brushes from the sakura maki travel set again very expensive for three pieces they are exquisitely gorgeous the sakura illustrations on the handles is simply to die for and if you're not into that then don't spend the money on this set. If you collect brushes, if you collect Chikohoro, or you collect all Beautylish and Chikohoro collaborations, this is just, I mean, it's essential in terms of just having traditional Japanese illustrations on the handle. And just look how neat this is. When you're done with it, you just close it and the bristles will not get marred or 
abused in any way so it's very easy to travel with i am concerned though if the illustrations will rub off if you just put this in a makeup bag with other makeup items and the rustle and bustle of it all like will it start to rub off i am concerned with that but to prevent that i would just put this in a plastic sleeve or just something else or have these in a separate bag altogether and have my makeup in a separate bag altogether and i'm sure you think what's the point of being so travel friendly if you have to take great means into making sure your travel friendly set doesn't get destroyed that's just me i don't mind taking those steps but i understand if that's something you're thinking about and not worth buying over the cheek brush is great you could use this for many steps in your complexion routine yes there is not a foundation brush i've been using my sponge so i don't have a problem missing that brush from the set and again when you're done with your cheek brush put it away despite how okay this eye looks i do still wish they made a fluffy brush instead. I'm interested to know though why they decided to create a shader brush instead of a fluffy one simply because I feel you just get so much more out of a tapered fluffy design not only for your eyes but you could also use it on many areas of your face sides of the nose spotlight highlight on the very tops of the cheekbones but again i'm sure they took that into consideration when designing this step and whatever reasons they had to include a shader brush instead of a fluffy one they probably thought it'll sell better who knows in terms of the multifunctionality, these three are highly multifunctional. you saw that i was able to do my whole face with them i applied my foundation with a sponge i'm sorry i didn't do that on camera but there's not a sponge in a set so i decided just to not include that in the footage we applied our loose powder we applied our bronzer highlighter blush blush topper shades we did this eye with the shadow brush alone and then we applied our lipstick and then we spritzed to finish if you're looking for a very high-end limited edition beautifully designed travel brush set from japan then yes this will be worth your purchase if you feel the way i did my makeup is not how you do your makeup if you feel you don't like the rattling sound if you don't travel and you just don't care to have a brush that's designed for travel then don't buy the set if you don't feel the need to spend this much money on brushes don't buy the set if you do collect beautylish and you need to have this in your life i think you'll be very happy and just pleased with the design they're just so gorgeous and the way they come in the box is absolutely beautiful i definitely will be traveling with these i still will pack a fluffy crease brush because i'm just a pain when it comes to that but i think it's good to know that if i really needed to downsize my packing i could rely at least on the powder and cheek brush to give me a beautiful complexion let me know friends if you are thinking about picking up the set share your input down below i would love to know if you are indeed picking up the set why you're excited about it and and other brush sets that you have or you have your eye on let me know down below and that my friends is a wrap thank you all so much for watching i hope this video helped and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and until then i'll see you on here again with another review tutorial or phase list take care and i'll see you again soon